Hey Prodigy Land, it's me, Coach Randy. Today's edition of Pandemic Bowlers Tour, the Stay at Home House Shot series, is probably going to look a little different than the others that came before. It seems I did something to my right knee last week when I was outside taking Oreo for a walk. And as a result, for the past several days, I've been hobbling around here like an old guy who needs a cane to walk. It hasn't been any fun at all. But I am undaunted, and like the trooper I am, I've decided to suck it up and play hurt so four more contestants can compete for a chance to get their name on the COVID-ed trophy pin. But with the injury, only the preliminary matches will be bowled on the carpeted Bowler's Ed Lane. The championship match will be played in a way that many of you might have simulated this game when you were younger. I'll explain it when we get to the championship match, but I know it's a prodigy first for sure, and I think there's a pretty good chance it'll be a YouTube first to see a game played that some of us grew up with. Stay tuned, because this one's going to be a lot of fun. It's episode three of the Pandemic Bowlers Tour Stay at Home House Shot Series, and it starts right now. Observing social distancing, extending our life expectancy. This is Pandemic Bowlers Tour. Welcome to my house, Brownswick Alvaretta Bowl, I call it. Located right here in my apartment in the little hamlet of Alpharetta, Georgia, just down the street from Roswell. Brownswick Alpharetta Bowl is an imaginary 24-lane bowling center. Instead of putting out a challenging oil pattern, each lane has its own unique pin pattern. Pin patterns work like this. Instead of shooting at all 10 pins each frame, you'll be gunning for a strike by shooting at a combination of pins that are defined by your lane number and the frame you're in. If you're bowling on lane 1, you'll start with the 1 pin up each frame. If you're on lane 12, you'll start with the 1 and 2 pins each frame. If you're on lane 20, you'll start with the 2 and 10 pins each frame. Those are your lane pins. Then you add the pin representing the frame you're bowling in. If it's the 3rd frame, you add the 3 pin. The 6th frame, the 6 pin. You get the idea. In the 10th frame, there are some exceptions to the rule, but we'll explain that as we get there. But first things first, we have to draw the names of our four contestants for today's show. Now just to remind you again, if you want to get your name in the hopper and have a chance to get your name on the COVID-ed trophy pin, here's what you need to do. Send your name, a picture of yourself, a face shot, you know, your mailing address, that's your shipping address, in case you win the covid trophy pin, we got to have some place to send it. And your phone number, your name, a headshot, your mailing address, and your phone number. Email it to me at randy at prodigybowlerstour.com and we'll put your name right here in our hopper. Now, we're getting quite a few entries in here now. So let's spin it up and we'll open the hopper door and reach in and grab our first entry of today's show. It's Tyler Jones of Walken, Iowa. Now Tyler, on the first two episodes we did of this, the first entry drawn was the one that it went on to win, so you know. You're going to have to try to maintain pace with everybody. All right, next one is Dave Miner 
of, not sure if it's Syracuse or Utica, New York. Oh yes, he didn't actually tell us what city he's in, so it's just a best guess. So Dave Miner up in New York State. It'll be Tyler Jones against Dave Miner in the first preliminary match. Unfortunately for both of them, I'll be bowling for them. Oh well. And in the second match, it'll be Michael T. Vuong of Worcester, Massachusetts against, who is it going to be, Josh Jackson of Richland, Mississippi. So those are our four contestants for today's show on the Pandemic Bowlers Tour Stay at Home House Shot Series. Okay, now that we have our four contestants drawn, we've got to draw lane assignments for each one of them. We'll go in order. The first name drawn was Tyler Jones. So Tyler Jones, let's draw your lane assignment. It's going to be lane two for Tyler Jones. Next, Dave Miner. Dave Miner, let's see what lane you're going to get. Lane 13. Lucky 13? Maybe. We'll see. And then in the second match, it's Michael Vuong, see where you're going to be bowling. Lane 12. Lane 12. And then finally, Josh Jackson. Lane 13, right beside him. So we're gonna have lane 13 in two of the matches today. Of course, the big disadvantage that all four players will be having to deal with is they're gonna have a fat old guy on a bum knee bowling for them. And good luck with that. I just promise that I will do my level best on every shot, but there are no guarantees. Tyler Jones was the first name we drew, so he will lead off. As you can see, I'm wearing my Columbia 300 Yellow Dot t-shirt that I got from InsideBowling.com. Pretty cool, guys. I shot an 847 with a Yellow Dot back in about 1979, a lifetime ago. All right, Tyler's up first. He's bowling on lane two, so he's got the two pin up each frame. It's the first frame, so we had the one pin. Pretty simple combination to start, just the one, two. And there's a strike to start. Yes siree, a strike in the very first frame. Now Dave Miner, bowling on lane 13, so he'll start with the one and three up every frame. It's the first frame, we add the one pin, of course the one pin's already up, so it's just the one, three. Ought to be able to get these two, the two pins that you want to hit when you're throwing for a strike, if you're a right-hander. Whoa! Hooked by it! Whoops. Dave, you're going to have to make better shots than that. For the spare. All right, good recovery. All right, Dave bowling on lane 13, so the one and three are up. We add the two, because it's the second frame. Well, this should be as easy as one, two, three. And there's a strike. All right, Tyler, second frame, so the two pin is up. It's lane two. The two pin is up. Doesn't get any easier than this. Just a single pin for a strike. Whoa, went by. 
Well, nothing's a gimme. All right, for the spare. Little adjustment off that last shot. There you go. So, a spare in the second frame. All right, lane two, the two pin is up. Third frame, the three pin is up. Got to fit the ball right between these two. This is a combination you would probably never leave at the bowling alley. How about that for a strike? So you probably have never seen it made before until now. All right, back to Dave Miner on lane 13. So we've got the one and three, and of course it's the third frame, so the three. Oreo, you're not showing your good side. No, Oreo is, uh, got to learn how to pose for pictures better than that. All right, a simple combination here. The one, three, for a strike. And there's a strike. And that gives Dave a double. All right, Dave, fourth frame on lane 13, so we've got the one, three, and the four. You can play this on either side of the one pin. We recommend hitting it on the left side. Let the ball get the one and four. And there's another strike. Just like that. All right, Tyler. Dave has put a turkey on us, so we better keep pace. It's the fourth frame, so the four is up here on lane two, so the two is up. Again, a pretty simple combination. And there you go, that gives Tyler a double to pull to within 10. All right, Tyler, we need to keep it going. Fifth frame, the 2-5. Got to be careful not to chop this one. Oh, nearly chopped it. Yeah, that was close, but got away with it. Three in a row. All right, we're back to Dave Miner, who's bowling on lane 13, so we have the 1-3. It's the fifth frame, so the five pin is up as well. Dave already with three strikes in a row, going for his fourth. And there's another strike. And that pulls him back out into the lead. All right, Dave, the one three because we're on lane 13, plus the six because it's the sixth frame. Got a four bagger working. A strike here would extend Dave's lead to 20 pins. Oh, nearly chopped it. Yeah, got away with one that time, but it was good enough. All right, Tyler. Here on lane two, the strikes start coming a little more difficult, starting in the sixth frame. We've got the two, six. And with Dave running off a five-bagger on us, we've really got to be aggressive and go for this. But at the same time, you want to be careful and not leave both of them. Clip the two pin on the left side, send it over into the six. Oh, almost. That was close, and it leaves a very easy spare. All right, for the spare. Be careful not to hit the wall first. That counts as a gutter. And that is a spare. All right, Tyler, lane two, seventh frame, so we've got the two, seven, and we need to start striking again. Trailing by 21 pins. Got to get some strikes going. There's one. There you go, even rang the door stop. All right, back to Dave Miner here on lane 13. The one, three are up, of course, and the seven because it's the seventh frame. This is probably the most difficult combination you'll have for a strike all game. Want to get the ball on the right side of the head pin, let it drive through, get the three, and send the one pin over into the seven. Okay. 
too much on the better one. Better than leaving the head pin. Yeah, it is better than leaving the one and the seven. All right, now, as I've mentioned before, you got to be careful and not hit the wall, because if you hit the wall, that's a gutter. If it hits the wall before it hits the pins, that's a gutter. Oh, that was like the same time, so tie goes to the runner. Hit the wall and the seven pin at the same time, so that counts as a spare. All right, Dave, you survived the seventh frame. Now on lane 13, we've got the one, three, and the eight for the eighth frame. Again, you can play this on either side. We recommend hitting on the left side of the head pin. And Oreo, you need to move. Throw a little bit of a backup ball or a straight ball from the left side of the lane. That'll work too. All right, Tyler. Lane two, so the two is up. Eighth frame, the eight is up. We've also got a strike up. We need to get a strike here to close the gap. If you can catch a double right here, it would cut the lead down to just 10 pins. And there's one right there. And that makes this a match going into the ninth and 10th frames where it'll be decided. All right, Tyler, ninth frame. We gotta have this, the two nine. Strike here, we even the match. This a baby split combination you would never see at the bowling alley. The two nine, fit the ball between them, put it on the right side of the two, let it deflect over into the nine. Yes! And that was done perfectly. Throwing a little straight ball from the left side of the lane. All right, Dave, lane 13, so the one and three are up. Ninth frame, so we add the nine. The match is all even. You've got a strike up, can take the lead. Plus, you have a little easier go of it in the 10th frame. Tyler's gonna have to make the 210 to get a strike on the first ball in the 10th. You'll have an easier shot than that. So this is big right here. With a strike working in the eighth, Dave can move out to a 10-pin lead with a strike right here on this ball. Oh, what in the world? What indeed? Well, we'll have to score that as a wild pitch. Well, fortunately, because you only had one strike up, you don't lose any count. Need the spare, though. This would keep the match even going into the 10th frame. Okay. A much better shot, even rang the door stop. All right, Dave. Lane 13, so the one and three are up. It's the 10th frame, we add the 10. You've got a spare working. A strike would be big right here. Put it right in the one three. Get that three to go over and Catch the 10 pin. Hmm. Mm. Just a little wide with that one. Got too much of the three pin and leaves the 10. All right, for the spare, again, got to be careful not to hit the wall first. That would be a gutter. Needs the spare to put the pressure on Tyler. There's a spare. So that's going to mean Dave will finish in the 230s. Okay, in the 11th frame, we add the 1 and the 10, which are already up. The 1, 3, 10 again. So once again, you want to favor the left side of the 3-pin just a little bit if you can. That doesn't count because the ball bounced out, so that's a 9 count. So that's going to give him 237. And a 237. Yes, that's the same number I got. Good addition. Well, Tyler, what a combination to need for a strike in the 10th. It's the number two lane, so the two pin plus the 10, because it's the 10th frame. A strike here, and you would lock it up. Nine spare strike, and you would win by one. Eight here, and a strike, and you tie. 
So there's different ways to go at this. I think we for sure don't want to miss them both. Then we'd need a strike. Well, then we'd need to make the 210 for the spare. Just to stay in it. Exactly. Oreo, you got to move. Move! A little distraction just when he really needs a good shot here. A strike here and he could put it away. Oh, that was close. That was real close, but now this sets up the possibility of a tie. All right, Tyler, must spare to have a chance to win. Again, can't hit the wall, or that's a gutter. Oreo, you're in the way again. Move, go on. An open frame here would mean Dave Miner would be your winner. But a spare and, well, a lot of different possibilities. And that's not helping. Move! Up here. Most here. important shot of the match, and Oreo has decided to inject herself. I think she wants her turn. Into the proceedings here. This is not helping my knee at all. All right, there's a spare. There's a spare, and it sets up one final ball. All right, Tyler, 11th frame, the fill ball. Because it's the 11th, we add the 1 and the 10. You're on lane 2, so the 2 is up. So you've got the 1, 2, 10. A strike to win, 9 to tie, 8's a loser. That pretty much sums it up. Got to have them all to win. Well, it went down to the very final ball of the match. 238 to 237, wow. Tyler Jones wins by a stick. So we are gonna move to match two. Michael Vuong and Josh Jackson next. Some of you have asked what I use for the backstop on this little lane in my living room. So I thought I'd show you. I just happen to have a few extra pieces of acoustic foam. This is a corner piece that would ordinarily sit on the floor or like that, up against the wall or up in the corner at the top of the room, like in a spot like that. And then this Big piece in the middle is just a just a sheet of this acoustic foam. It's two feet by four feet, and it just sits on the floor back here in the back. You see it's been a little torn. That's why I'm using it. These corner pieces just prop it up against the wall, and it kind of buckles in the middle which is perfect because that causes a bit of a cushioning effect when the ball hits it or a pin hits it. Everything sort of funnels toward the middle off the corner pieces and the piece in the middle just sort of cushions the blow. Sometimes it keeps the ball from coming out, but a lot of times it still will come out. But that's how it works. Okay, so I know some of you want to know where do you get one of these lanes? They're available online at bowlersedsupply.com. Originally conceived as a way for schools to introduce kids to the sport of bowling in gym class, these carpeted lanes are perfect for when you're stuck at home for extended periods of time and just have to get your bowl on somehow. The deluxe kit that I have includes the 20-foot lane plus a set of regulation size pins and a ball. You also get a cardboard template that unfolds into a stencil that you can use to paint or draw the pin spots on a floor or driveway or sidewalk. And there's a pad of blank score sheets so you can keep your own score. The set also comes with a loose leaf binder containing a complete curriculum used by gym teachers to teach kids the sport of bowling. And if you request it, they'll include a copy. 
The pins are regulation size and come with a little sand in them to give them some weight to help them stand up. And the ball comes in three weights, three, four, and five pounds. To get your own set, go to www.bowlersedsupply.com. Click the link to purchase kits and components, and then select the link for BPAA members to go to their catalog. There's also a phone number on their website so you can call them with questions or to order your own lane. You'll have a blast bowling on the Bowler's Ed Lane from BowlersEdSupply.com. That's BowlersEdSupply.com. Here's another prodigy head who couldn't stand not having his own bowler's head lane so he could hold his own stay-at-home house shot open. Yeah. He's got a smooth release. It's Jamie Archibald of Norwich, Connecticut who sent this video. Nothing hits like a hammer. And as you can see, here's a different kind of carpeted lane. This is not the Bowler's Ed Lane we're using on Pandemic Bowler's Tour, but one that's sold in Australia. We were sent these images and this video by Adrian Board. She's the mom of Charlie Board, this left-handed two-hander from Down Under. It's good to see kids of all ages having fun. But now it's time we turn our attention back to our bracket. Tyler Jones eked out a one-pin victory over Dave Miner and has punched his ticket to the championship match. But first, we need to find out who he'll be facing, either Michael Vuong or Josh Jackson. But we've had a curveball thrown at us. I had planned all along to stage the championship a different way because of my knee injury. But it turned out that just bowling that last match was enough to cause me to re-injure the knee. And although that first match was taped two weeks ago, I still can't put much weight on my bad knee, so rather than making you wait any longer for this episode, I've decided to stage this other match the same way I was planning on contesting the championship match. This is a game I used to play when I was in third grade when I was home convalescing after a stay in the hospital. It's called Spare Time, and I bought this one on eBay. It's the exact same game I used to play as a kid. It's played with 10 dice. Each die has five sides that are blank and one side that displays a bowling pin. You throw all 10 dice for your first ball, and then if no pins are showing, you got a strike. If any pins come up, then those are the pins you have to shoot at for your spare. So, let's get started. We'll bowl the same way we always do, match play style, with the first player bowling one frame and then bowling two frames at a time after that. So both players have taken their two practice balls on each lane. And so now it's time to start the match. We'll do this just like a regular match. Michael Vuong is going to lead off because he was the first one drawn. Oreo is here to oversee everything. You might want to get out of the way of the camera, girl. Hey, get over here. Hey, don't be bumping the camera either. Come here. Yeah, want to say hello to everybody? You can sit right there and watch. <laughs> you can sit and watch, but you have to sit. Oreo, sit. Okay, Michael Vuong is first. You don't get any of these now. And how about that? There is a strike to start for Michael. We didn't see any strikes in the warm-up balls. That's very good. All right, now Josh Jackson is up. You don't get any of these. Sit. Oreo, sit. Okay, there's an eight count. We have that one, ah, ah, and that one still standing. So we go for those for the spare. There's an eight count on the first ball. I gotta keep score. No overhead scoring here. 
Oh, and he left one. So that's eight and one. That's nine in the first frame and an unfortunate open frame for Josh. I wonder if that was a split. It's kind of hard to tell. Give it a good shake. Oreo, move. Oh, there's a seven count. We have three standing this time. Josh, I don't think you're lined up, buddy. A spare. Way to go. But Michael Vuong off to an early 11 turn lead. Oreo, move. Come here. Yeah, sit. Sit. Or lie down, or... Now this is a little different. This is a little different. You don't usually see me over here. The table is not usually sitting here, so she's all disoriented. She doesn't know what's going on. Alright, Michael Wong is up. There is a seven count. We count three standing. So we'll go for these three. And a spare. Very nice conversion. That was a tough spare to make, too, buddy. All right, up in the third frame. Michael Wong. It's a nine count, probably a ten pin, don't you know? Forget to keep score. And a spare. So that's a 10 pin lead for Michael. And now Josh is up in the third. Oreo, you better get away from the camera. Sit. Or even better still, lie down. You want to play, don't you? Come on, Josh. It's a nine count. There's the one standing. And for the spare. Oh no! It's left standing. Well, you have some terrible luck, Josh. Either that or you're not a very good spare shooter. I'm not sure which. All right. Fourth frame. Come on, Josh. You gotta get it together now. Another nine count. There's one standing. Come on. He left it again. Unbelievable. Josh, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. You got some bad luck. All right, Michael, up in the fourth. There's a nine count, one standing. And a spare. That's the way you're supposed to do that. All right, so it looks like, my goodness, it's a 32 pin lead for Michael. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 32 pins. Oreo, get out of the way. A seven count this time. It gives you 75 through four frames. Get those out of the way. Now you've got a spare, and you left one. So seven and two gives you 84 in the fifth. Still a pretty big lead. And now it's Josh that's up, and Josh, buddy, you just got to go to the whip right now. There is a strike for Josh, and boy, he needed one. Way to go, Josh. See a replay of that one. Josh, buddy. 
You just gotta go to the whip right now. There is the strike. Needs another one right here. But instead he gets seven. Tell you what, I have a feeling doubles are hard to come by in this game. Gotta have the spare. Gotta have it. There it is. Seven and a spare. Well, I think you're just gonna have to hope for Michael to back up. All right, Michael is now up in the sixth frame. Uh, that is a nine count. We got one standing right here. Right there. And it's a spare. Michael, you've been a pretty good spare shooter this game. You had one open in the fifth, but otherwise you covered them all. Seven frame. Got two standing. So there is eight. Gives you 102 in the sixth. And missed them both. Been watching Christian too much. Sorry, Christian. I couldn't help it. All right, well, Josh, he gave you an opening. Getting late in the match. Seven frame. Yikes. Left three. Those three right there. But I tell you what, a spare here would be big. It would get you close. There it is, a spare. That brings the match to within a mark. And I like close finishes, no matter who wins. All right, it's Josh up in the eighth. Gotta have a strike. Gotta get a strike somewhere. It's a nine count. Just that one is standing. Gives you 102. Close the match down to just eight pins, but now... You've missed some single pin spares this game. You can't miss another one here, buddy. You've got to make this. There's a spare. All right. <clears throat> Michael Vuong up in the eighth. And there is a strike. How about that? Very impressive. All right, ninth frame, are you gonna back it up? No, we got an eight count here. Left two standing. But got the spare. That's big. So here we go, the decisive final frames in a close match, Josh working on a spare, trailing by eight, gets an eight count, so now the lead is ten. Got to make this spare, just got to. Give it a good shake. And he missed one. Josh! How could you do that, buddy? 129. That's going to make it tough. I was counting on you. All right. Maybe a couple of strikes here in the tenth to force Michael's hand. There's a nine count. Doggone it.
There's a spare. So, the fill ball, you get seven. There's three standing right there. So, 146, and I'm afraid Michael can pretty much walk this one in. Michael just needs four pins. There's nine. And there's your winner. There's the one he left. A spare. Oh, what am I doing? You gotta throw them all on the fill ball, don't you? There's another nine count on the fill ball for 168 so it's gonna be Tyler Jones and Michael Vuong in the championship match hey prodigy land it's me coach Randy here's how you can be on prodigy bowlers U tour all you need is a smartphone that records in 4k resolution at 60 frames per second and a thumb drive that you can send me with the video file Provide your address and I'll send it back. Then just record a match between yourself and one of your friends or foes. Hey, bowl as many games as you want and pick out the best one to send. You know, where the two of you are bowling your best. Then offload the video file from your phone to your computer and burn it onto the thumb drive. Complete instructions on how to record the match and how to get the video file from your phone onto a thumb drive can be found online at www.prodigybowlerstour.com. Click on the tab at the top of the page for U-Tour. There you'll also find the application form you'll need to fill out, along with the release forms that the parents of any minor children who appear on the video will need to sign. Fill out the forms, have your parents sign them, copy your video file onto a thumb drive, and send it to me at the address provided. There's no entry fee and no cost to be on the show other than the lineage fees your bowling center will charge you for bowling the games that you film and the postage required to send me the thumb drive and the filled out forms. If we use your match on Prodigy Bowlers U Tour, you'll be an official member of the PBAA, Prodigy Bowlers Across America, and your name will go up on our virtual wall at prodigybowlerstour.com. So get over to ProdigyBowlersTour.com right now and click the tab at the top for the U-Tour. Download the application and read the instructions. Easy peasy. And pretty soon, you'll be making an appearance on Prodigy Bowlers U-Tour. Well, in our first Pandemic Bowlers Tour match contested using the old spare time dice game, it was Michael T. Wong who had the magic touch, while Josh Jackson came up snake eyes. But there's always another time. And for youth bowlers like Josh, there's also the soon-to-be-launched Prodigy Bowlers U-Tour, where you can film yourself bowling a match and send it to me, and I'll put you on the show. Go to our website at www.prodigybowlerstour.com, click on the U-Tour link, and download the instruction packet for everything you'll need to know to get on the show. But now it's time to decide a championship here on the Stay at Home House Shot series. Tyler Jones, who won the earlier semifinal match back when I could still walk, will face Michael Vuong for the right to get his name on the COVID-Ed trophy pin. All right, here we are on the championship pair of lanes. I'm going to give Tyler Jones a couple of practice balls. He gets an eight count on that ball. These don't count, of course. They're just practice balls. There's a seven count. So, Tyler, you're going to have to get lined up, buddy. 
Those are just the practice balls. Only the player coming on gets practice balls. The guy that's already won a game, he doesn't get practice balls. All right. This is it for the right to have your name put on the COVID Ed Trophy pin. This is the championship match. Tyler Jones leads off. Here we go. First ball, first frame. And there is an eight count. I knocked that over just now, sorry. And a spare. Eight and a spare for Tyler. Nicely done. So now Michael Wong up in the first frame. There is a seven count. And a spare. So they're even through the first frame. Oreo, who do you think is going to win this? Do you have a preference? Thanks a lot. I love you too. Yeah, sit. Oreo, sit. Good sit. Good girl. Now just watch. Watch and learn. There is a nine count for Michael. So that gives him 19 in the first. Now going for the spare. And he makes it. Very impressive. Couple of marks to start the match. All right. Tyler, up in the second frame, working on a spare. Gets seven. Leaves three. All right. Four to spare. It's nine out. So Michael Vuong takes the early lead. All right, Tyler up in the third frame. There is an eight count. We got a couple standing. And a spare. Nicely done. All right, my leg is falling asleep sitting in the same position too long. Oh, this is not good. All right. Hopefully I can make this work. I only have a few more minutes of this. And then I can get up and tell my, tell my leg, wake up, Oreo, sit. She wants this microphone that I have down here on my pant leg. You don't get it. You don't get it. Sit. Oreo, sit. Sit. Good sit. You're a good girl. All right. Michael, up in the third frame. Let's go. An eight count. These two. All right. For the spare. And he makes the spare. The crowd goes wild. All right. Michael in the fourth frame. It's a nine count. He leaves one standing. That one right there. But it's a conversion, so he stays clean. 
And now the onus is on Tyler Jones up in the fourth frame. Gets eight. Man, strikes are hard to come by. In this game, I'm finding out. I had forgotten that. I told you I had played this game in the third grade. I don't think I've played it since. I don't remember much about it. There's a spare for Tyler Jones. All right. Fifth frame, Tyler Jones trailing by 12. There's an eight count. Telling you, strikes are just tough. There's a spare though. And closing frames is big in this game, just as it is in regular bowling. And Oreo, get your nose away from the camera. Come here. Come here. Wouldn't you rather be over here? You don't want to run the camera. You want to be on the camera. Don't chew on my shirt. Welcome to my life. All right, Michael Vuong, you're up in the fifth frame. Oreo, stay away from the cameras. Come here. Hey, come here before you bang something. Get over here. Oreo, sit. Down, Oreo, down. Down. Oh, God, you don't remember anything from doggy school, do you? I remember how to eat those treats. All right, Michael. There's an eight count. So the lead stays at 12. Assuming you make this spare, which you do. All right, we're getting down to the end now. Sixth frame, Michael Vuong. There's a strike. Very good. Tyler? Tell you what, let's put the lid back on these. Here. When I watch Bar Rescue on TV, this is how they look. It's a nine count. Left one standing right there. So that's 81. The lead is now 13. You cannot afford an open frame here, buddy. There's a spare. All right, seventh frame. Tyler, come on, Tyler. Oh my goodness, the seven count. Oreo, get your nose out of the camera. Goofy, come here. Uh, it's 98. All right. Got to make this. Got to make it. And you did. Spare. Keeps it close. All right. Michael Vuong. Up now in the seventh frame. There is a nine count. And a spare. Michael? 
eight frame. Another nine count. This is what we call keeping the ball in play. And another spare. Man, he is a spare shooting machine, that Michael Wong. Tyler Jones looking for his first strike of the match. Could use one here in the eighth. But instead he gets eight. And they're just falling hard. Gotta make it. Just gotta make it. There's a spare. All right. Well, ninth frame. Tyler, if ever you have a couple of strikes in you, now would be the time to start unleashing them. But no, it's an eight count. This one and this one. Oh no! He chopped it! 144, 143. Oh no. Now you're in trouble. So the best Tyler can do now is 173 with three strikes in the tenth. Michael can almost get that get there without a mark. There's a nine count for Michael here in the ninth. An open frame. So Tyler, don't touch that dial. There's still hope for you if Michael opens again. All right, here's Michael, first ball in the tenth. And he only gets seven. Gotta have a spare, Michael, here in the tent. And he gets a spare. Now he's gonna have to get three pins to shut out Tyler. He gets them all. 181. Nicely done. A clean, no, not a clean game. He had that one open in the ninth. Hmm. All right, Tyler, we'll finish it out for you and see what you get. There's an eight count. And a spare. Finally, the fill ball, strike for 163, it's a nine count, so 162, and it's Michael Wong who gets his name on the COVID Ed trophy pin this week on the Pandemic Bowlers Tour. Look, it's Nolan Kemp. How are you and your family doing? We're doing good. We're just hanging in there, taking one day at a time, and just hoping that the coronavirus is going to be over pretty soon. But Yeah, that's pretty much everybody's story right now, just trying to get through this. Yep. I uh, spoke to Christian uh, yesterday. He went bowling. Have you been bowling? No, I haven't bowled in two months, and I'm probably not going back until this is all over. So, 
I'm with you, buddy. I'm not going back until this is over either because I'm in the high risk category. I don't really have a choice. All right. Yep. And, you know, I applaud your uh, taking the safe route. Are your yeah, parents well, both? Been... Are your parents both working? Yes, they are. So your dad has had to go back to work, right? He's no, nah, he's been working since this. He's been working. He never stopped he's working. Never, never stopped. Nope. What about your mom? She's working from home. She gets to work from home, so that's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, I don't know that our viewers really know that much about you other than what they've seen you bowling on the show, but you're an only child, aren't you? No. Um, I have. Well, now that's news to me because I've never met any siblings. Yeah. <laughs> I, have two. I have two brothers and two sisters, yeah. What? Mm -hmm. You have two brothers and two sisters? Yeah, not only right. not only have I never met them, but they've never come out to the car when I've dropped you off or picked you up. No, they're never home. They're on their own. They're off on their own. So you're the baby in the group, huh? Yep. I yes, gotcha. I am. Well, so what are you doing to pass the time? Nothing really is nothing much that we really can do. I just try to like stay busy around the house and help out as much as I can. But other than that, just same old, same old. Try to explore new things or whatever. But other than that, well, now I don't think our viewers really know this, but you basically have grown up in our youth bowling program at Bolero Roswell, or what used to be called. Brunswick Zone Roswell. I remember bowling there when it was just called Brunswick Roswell. And um, in fact, I think I even have a picture of you when you were 13 or no, I think you were 11 years old. This was in 2013. You're 18 now. Yeah. Turning 19 on Sunday. Man. So happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to it. Nolan. And, you know, this was your year to graduate high school. So you are a member of the class of 2020 who had a big national graduation ceremony on network television the other night. I don't know if you've got a chance to watch any of it, but there were a lot of I, performers I and a former president who had something to say about it all. So mm -hmm. you feel like you're missing out on something here? Yeah, well, I'm missing out on a lot. We didn't have a graduation. We didn't even get to prom, nothing like that. So, yep, we kind of missed out on a lot, but it's nothing we can do about it. And I also know that uh, you had talked to me earlier in the season wanting to have a few moments to say a few words at our end-of-season trophy ceremony and awards presentation at the end of the league season. And of course that's been scrubbed too. So, all right, here's your moment. What would you like to tell everybody? Oh, so basically when I first started out in the league, you know, we, we weren't really like, we weren't and this was even before you came, we weren't really big, but through the years as me, <laughs> Logan Foss and Christian Nell, as we, we three, we grow up and everything. And once we grow up, it's just like you came and then our league just kind of started expanding. And then once we started Prodigy, I think that's really when we just like took off. Everybody wanted to come bowl our league so they could bowl Prodigy. Like we just took off from there. And I got to say, Prodigy is really, it has, I can't even put it into words. It has really done a lot for people all over the world that just want to come here out of state to come to Roswell and bowl is it's really something amazing. Well, and now if they want to be on the show, they'll just have to come over to my apartment because that's where the bowling is happening now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know, Oreo may have something to say about letting them in, but yeah. it's really nice of you to say those things. Um, 
you know, I remember the year I started coaching there, um, which I think was either 2012 or 2013, you were just a little guy and you had that crooked arm swing. And I tried to, I tried to change you, but you were having none of it. And, you know, you kind of made it your own. It's a, uh, it's a unique style and you just kept improving and kept improving and kept improving. And I think this year you ended up somewhere around 200 of an average, 190 yeah. or 200, somewhere in there. Yeah. And uh, so you just kept getting better and better. And, you know, I think you learned a lot along the way. And uh, I just, as far as prodigy is concerned, I just remember when I was a little kid, I remember my first two junior bowling coaches. There was a lady named Blanche. I don't remember her last name. I was pretty young. And then there was a lady named Flo DeTiro. They were both coaches at King Louis Ranch Mart Lanes in Leewood, Kansas, where I grew up just outside of Kansas City. Yeah. And, you know, I just kind of hoped that maybe Prodigy would – at least cement me into the minds of the kids that were on the show. Cause I imagine it's an experience that you'll probably remember the rest of your life. Just the way I've always remembered my junior league and first league I ever bowled in with the five fingered bowling ball for the little kids. And, uh, you know, it's, just, you know, I just like being around you guys and, and it's been fun. And, and, you know, you're one of them that's, that's sort of been one of my uh, favorites, if I have favorites. I mean, you, you kind of – I took you under my wing at some point. You were not very well understood by some of the people there. You had a little anger management issue at times. But I just, you know, I just kind of pulled you aside and said, look, man, you know, I'm going to work with you, and you're going to grow up, and you're going to be an okay young man. And – you're more than that. You're a fine young man. And I've been really proud of you. And the fact that you took all the little kids under your wing and sort of became their guardian angel has been noticed by a lot of parents. And I just want you to know that uh, you're appreciated more than you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so uh, basically, when I was little. Like them, like Hunter, or Josh, whoever you know. I didn't when I was coming up. Those big kids, they weren't. They weren't helping me. They weren't doing nothing to that. So I basically just, I was said, when when I get older, I'm gonna I'm gonna help them because there was nobody there to help me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna help them with their game and make a difference. So that's why that's what I set out to do. And that's what I did. Well, you, you sure did. And, uh, and it just, you know, goes to show that a little kindness goes a long way. Look, I know you got uh, people pulling at you in different directions and you probably got chores to do or dinner to eat or something. So I'm not going to keep you, but uh, I, I'm glad we got a chance to visit and uh, give you a chance to say hey to all the prodigy heads out there in prodigy land and let them know you're doing okay. Yep. I just want to say to everybody, you know, if you can, if you don't need to go out, don't go out. If you are going out, wear a mask, wear gloves and stuff, wherever you go, but just stay safe. Just stay six feet apart. That's very crucial because numbers every day you just keep going up and going up and going up. So when you have to go out, make sure you stay safe. Okay, man. Same to you. Stay safe. Thank Peace. You. Well, there you have it. Our third episode of the Pandemic Bowlers Tour Stay at Home House Shot Series. And Michael T. Wong of Worcester, Massachusetts is our winner following a hard-fought 181-162 to victory over Tyler Jones. Clearly, Michael has been training for this moment all spring. Hey, if you think you have the right stuff to be a winner on the Pandemic Bowlers Tour, Send your name, a picture of yourself, you know, a headshot, your physical mailing address, and your phone number, and email it all to me at randy at 
prodigybowlerstour.com and maybe I'll draw your name on the next one of these shows. But before we go, there is one small bit of business we still have to tend to. Well, we've reached the end of another Pandemic Bowlers Tour Stay at Home House Shot Series episode. And Michael T. Vuong reigns supreme over Tyler Jones in the championship match 181 to 162. So Michael T. Vuong gets his name on the Pandemic Bowlers Tour COVID Ed Trophy Pin. And we'll write it right here. And there you go. Congratulations to go along with our other couple of winners in the first two episodes. Now keep your eyes open because coming soon to this YouTube channel is the Prodigy Bowlers U Tour. I've been asked, are these stay at home house shot series episodes going to continue? And the simple answer is, I don't know. If we get enough kids to send in videos of themselves bowling, following the guidelines that we set forth in the information packet that's available at prodigybowlerstour.com, click the U Tour link at the top, send in enough videos of kids bowling, then my time will be spent editing the U Tour shows. But if we don't get that many, I may continue to do these stay-at-home house shot series episodes. I know this much, I won't be doing any more until my knee heals, because as much fun as the dice game was, I know you'd rather see me bowling on our Bowler's Ed Lane, and I'd rather be bowling on it too. So anyway, stay tuned, because the YouTuber is going to be a lot of fun. We've already got some episodes ready to go, and they'll start releasing soon. So for now, it's Coach Randy saying, See you next time.